Heart rate variability, HRV, it's something that's been around for a long time, uh, I'm certainly not new to this, but it's a metric that I've been looking at very closely for about the last, really closely for the last four weeks, but it's been off on my radar for the last, I guess, year, year, year and a half, two years. So in a nutshell, HRV is the amount of time that fluctuates, let's say, between the heartbeats. And this could be anything from 20 milliseconds to 200 milliseconds. Generally speaking, the higher the number, the higher the number is, the better the score. But everyone is different and there's no really good score to get, but generally speaking, the higher the better. A low score can be indicative of a number of different things. Uh, generally speaking, it's from a stress, from whether it's emotional stress, anxiety, physical, a lack of recovery, poor diet, poor sleep. There are a number of different things that can affect your HRV, your heart rate variability. But generally, if you have, generally speaking, if you've got a watch like a Garmin or an Apple, those will be able to pick up those metrics. So therefore, that score will be personal to you. So therefore, you can use that as a consistent sort of baseline to see if that changes up and down. So what I've done in the last two or three weeks is pay loads of attention to it. And I've found some really interesting things about, well, obviously to do with me, about how my score is affected by certain things. Generally speaking, I think we're all on the same page here and I think we all understand that if you don't sleep very well, you're gonna be a bit tired the next day and your HRV will be a bit lower. If you're overtraining, if you're smashing at the gym, you're not recovering, your HRV is gonna be a bit lower. It's basically a way of, your, of your, your, your body telling your autonomic nervous system that something isn't quite right and you just need to take a day off or chill out. So don't panic, don't stress, if the score's low, it, the next day it could be higher. Even if it's low in the morning, it could be higher or vice versa. There's no set sort of number, just go for that baseline. But I'm gonna go into detail about what I found to be very interesting and what I'd like you to do is if you agree with me and if there's any other things that affect your HRV your heart rate variability it's tricky to say then please leave comments below um, because I want to know if this is just if this is something that's just common to most people or whether it's just uh, indicative you know for my situation but I don't think so I think it's generally speaking it'll be pretty obvious but there's one or two that won't be anyway I'm gonna go into it in a second right so not to bore you guys completely with all the dates, numbers, graphs and figures and things, I'm gonna keep this quite short and simple. So I'm just gonna basically show you where I am now, which is good because today is the, what is it? It's the 31st of October and that was my scores for this morning. So if you can see that, if that focuses, that's a pretty nice score of my HRV. I think it's 101. Yeah, so 101 this morning. Resting heart rate was 43. I won't go into the rest of those metrics. And yesterday was the same. Monday was also that. It was about 98 or something. Huge increase. But what I will say, over the weekend and last week, very fatigued. 25. So I think that is, that's 25 there on the Sunday. And uh, that's not a good score. That's low. Uh, 25. But that is that has been replicated, let's say, throughout the last two or three weeks. Not as low as that. But I've noticed that if A, I have just one drink, one drink the night before, my score is lower the next day, which is bizarre because I really didn't think that would affect it that much. That said, I do feel hungover. I mean, I don't drink much, but when I do have more than two drinks, I do feel pretty crappy the next day. So what I would also like to know is if you guys also have the same thing. So if you have a drink or two, and just literally just one or two drinks, do you feel rubbish the next day and is your HRV score lower? Because for me, there has been an immediate sort of noticeable connection between the two, which is surprising because I didn't realize it would be so apparent as that. So I guess the first sort of thing that I've noticed, so if you're looking to increase your HRV, maybe cut out the drinking. Uh, and again, I don't drink much. I probably only have a couple of drinks a week um, on the weekend. And, but I must admit on the weekend, I had other stuff going on. It was pretty hectic, pretty stressful. Lots of other bits and bobs in my head was going on. So there's lots of other factors. So that's the hard sort of irony about trying to control this HRV thing, the heart rate variability is because there's so many variables that can affect it. But I did say, I did notice, sorry, that it was pretty obvious that a drink would affect it. So the other big thing that I noticed was when I trained in more of a fasted state or a less fed state because it was half term, I was at home, I had lots of kids stuff to do. So I had two weeks which I did a lot more training um, in a less fed state. I noticed that that did also lower my HRV. So again, the alcohol, let's say, the training in a faster state, all these things are stressed for the body and they're gonna sort of stress the parasymp parasympathetic nervous system. Um, and just, yeah, just gonna cause just a few issues in the background. So again, leave comments below if you've also found that similar because I'm just keen to hear feedback from you guys if that's affected your score. 
Okay, so the other thing that I also noticed might have an impact on the HRV score was obviously the intensity of training. Again, over half term, the two weeks, I didn't have much time to go out on the long, slow runs. So my training was, I suppose, more frequent, but more intense. So shorter, but more intense. Now I think that will obviously have an impact on your HRV because you probably, A, haven't got much time to recover, but also B, it's harder, harder efforts. So instead of going for more of an 80, 20 approach of the week, where 80% is, 80 is easy and 20% hard, I was going for 50, 50, or maybe more, I don't know what it was, but it was just, you're just, you're just taking what you can. What I did find to help increase my HRV was to boost up my protein levels. So I don't know if you've watched my channel in the last few weeks, but I have been talking about the idea of boosting up my protein levels by getting things in like, getting stuff more, stuff like liver and beef and all that stuff back into my diet because I think I might've been dropping a little bit too low. And when I did, I did notice the big increase in my HRV score. I think by getting the protein in, you're gonna get more minerals, zinc, magnesium, selenium, all those more minerals in your body which could help to decrease stress, increase recovery, just make you feel better, get the neurotransmitters in your brain firing up more, and just increase overall health. In turn, going to increase your HRV score, which for me, in the last three or four weeks, it has. Please leave comments below if you found something similar where you've boosted up your protein and that has helped your HRV score, or just even generally whether that just made you feel better. So, now, is there anything we can do apart from sleep, nutrition, diet, keeping track of exercise, etc., keeping stress levels down to help increase HRV? I have heard down on the grapevine that there are a few little tricks. One of them is this, what I'm doing right now. So I'm currently standing outside, barefoot on the grass, and this is basically essentially called grounding or earthing. And this is supposed to help to reduce inflammation in the body, reduce the types sort of deionize neg negativity. I'm not quite sure the full benefits, but it's supposed to help you within, down to a cellular level, to ground yourself to the earth, and in turn, to help boost up your HRV. Now, personally, I've got no clue about this really, so I'm gonna put it out there. If you guys, if anyone's had any experience with grounding, earthing, and you've had any huge benefits, then please let me know in the comments below because I do like the idea of it. And it does make sense in many ways, and I have spoken it briefly before a few years, well, a year ago or so. Um, and it does feel nice just to get your feet in nature, on the ground. And I suppose human beings are the only creatures out there that are actually wear, that actually wear shoes. Dogs, cats, leopards, squirrels, whatever it is, they're all connected to the ground, whereas we are generally stacked up in some sort of heel, some sort of rubber, some sort of insulation. So I can see why there is some truth or some apparent uh, explanation of how grounding and earthing could work. But anyway, try it. Feels good. Okay. Right, back indoors. Okay, so apart from grounding, other things that basically could, other things that can help are things like breathing. Obviously you've got like Wim Hof techniques or just box breathing, that in for four, hold four, out for four, hold for four. Calming central nervous system down through things like yoga and just even meditative, meditative walks in the woods, etc. being out of nature. All those things will help to calm the body, help to calm the central nervous system, help to, just to increase overall health, therefore should boost up your HRV. So I think in summary, things for me that affects it, too intense training, too frequently, lack of recovery obviously, drinking, alcohol, toxins, obviously the, the normal three, you know, stress, lack of sleep, etc., poor diet, um, lack, lacking of certain minerals maybe within the diet too, these are all the things that I guess just affect your health. Therefore, they will affect your HRV, but I didn't realize how quickly and apparent and how succinctly it, uh, it seems to take effect. All I have to say now is thanks very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do click that like and subscribe button. Uh, please let me know below as well if you guys have had similar things with, with when you've changed your diet or changed your exercise or, or, or traveled more or been more stressed with X, Y, or Z, whether this has had an immediate impact on your HRV and also whether you guys have any sort of novel ways to boost HRV because I'm always open to more intuitive, imaginative ideas to just relax and increase your HRV because I do think it's quite a good metric to follow. And I think most of us now have things like Apple Watches, Garmin's, Whoops, Aura Rings, all those things can measure the HRV. They're not all gonna be immediately 100% accurate, but what they will do, as I said earlier, will give you a nice baseline. And that baseline you can then look, and then you can just sort of write down in your diary different things, different training methods, and whether those have had an impact on your central nervous system and your HRV. 
Right. Hopefully that hasn't gone on too long. Hopefully that was entertaining and informative. Uh, it might give you some new ideas and new things to subtract or, or put back into your life. And um, continue on a nice, happy, healthy, you know, strong life. That's it. That's it for me. I will say goodbye here. That's my daughter's birthday there. Happy birthday, Margot. That was yesterday. That's another stress. Whew.